Are you looking for new books to read? Do you like finding a new special author? Are you tired of the same old books from the same old authors? Well then, welcome to Discovered Wordsmiths, a podcast where you can hear from fantastic new authors. Join Steven Schneider as he finds and talks to authors you may not know, but authors that have worked hard to write great new books. Hear about their book and why you should check it out. So sit back and listen to today's Discovered Wordsmith. Well, then if we're all good, we'll get started. All right. So, Freddie, welcome. Good morning. Uh, Welcome to Discovered Wordsmiths. How are you today? Wonderful. Thank you so much for the invite. Yeah, it's good to have you here. I can't wait to find out about this book. It's perfect timing for the time of year. (laughs) Yeah, it's... No, please go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. You go ahead. I was just going to say, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you live, some of the things you like to do besides writing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I am in the uh, greater Houston area, technically Richmond, which is about a half an hour outside of downtown Houston. Um, I am uh, an entrepreneur who owns a media company that centers around storytelling and helping brands and individuals uh, share their stories with the world. So it, it writing books and doing podcasts and helping with podcast production is it's uh, really all intertwined. I agree. I like I like that because uh, I've heard a lot more about nonfiction, writing it in a story style and uh, companies telling their story through their brand and all that. And it kind of sparked me, my idea of working with kids, not just on writing books and stories, but stories in video games, and how they can, you know, get into the video game industry by writing instead of having the code. Everyone thinks you got a code and there's so much more to it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in video games, the best video games, at least in my humble opinion, is are, are the games that that are story based. We got, you know, I don't, I don't know how old you are. I'm 47. So I grew up with Atari 2600, Snooze Tommy Best. Uh, yeah. And, and, but Nintendo 64, man, we got Metroid. We got Legend of Zelda. Um, Frogger was fun. But I mean, where's the story in that? You get splat yeah. hit by a truck, right? But but it those still spawned several seasons of a cartoon, so yeah. they created something there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, no, it's like it's like that journey that you go on, and it gets you uh, it gets you sucked in. Then next thing you know, it's summer's over, and it's time to go back to school. Right, right. So yeah, I, I'm I, you know same age, and I, I agree with you. Some of those, a lot of people now complain about, oh, that game sucks because the graphics weren't that great. Well, I, I grew mm. up on a Commodore and an Atari. If the game was fun, that was all that mattered, you know, the graphics. Yeah. But it's so funny now. You got so many independents doing 8-bit graphic uh, video games after everyone was saying, oh, we need better, better graphics. And then not always true. Not in the video game world. So. Yeah, everything old is new again. <laughs> exactly, except us, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, don't remind me. <laughs> All right. So uh, you live in Houston, so you haven't been getting the cold weather like we have up here. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Well, and and uh, we live three years in Minneapolis, so we know all oh. about cold. And so, yes, OK, yeah. So the cold weather up there, it's much like the heat down here where you could be native and you just don't get used to it. Um, <laughs> it but I will say when we when we lived when we lived up north, um, there was a threshold and it wasn't free the the technically freezing mark it was 20 degrees at, at some point when it when the weather was when it got up to 20 all right i can go outside with a dog and we can go play and that was it but if it wasn't the teens or lower forget it right right yeah and the wind and all that definitely yeah okay so uh, your book we're going to talk about is Allow Me to Ruin Your Christmas. And it's a great time of year for that, uh, yeah. which the, the title is very intriguing. Uh, tell us a little bit about this book and why you wanted to write it. Yeah. first, Well, first and foremost, I got to tell you, because I love the story. I was talking to Tweet T. Sutherland during season one of my episode of my uh, podcast, rather, and um, and she was asking because every now and then I'll pull my last question because it's Freddie's huge ask 
podcast. It's an interview form. So the last question, every now and then I'll say, hey, so uh, this is Freddie. See what you ask podcast. What would you like to ask me? And so I asked Twee that question and she asked me what I was working on. And so I told her about the book. It's, um, you know, it's a thriller. It's set in Houston around the holiday season. Oh, what's it called? And I told her that I wasn't sure about the title yet. And I had a couple of working titles like he ruined my Christmas. And then I forget what the other working title was. And then I just, for some reason, it just came out. And then I'm thinking, maybe allow me to ruin your Christmas. And she started laughing. She thought that was funny. And so I'm like, okay, here's a best selling author who likes the title. And so she just basically affirmed what, what, what it would be. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. So, uh, it's a fiction book. Uh, what, it, what is it? Is it, uh, uh, you're ruining all the kids by telling them about Santa Claus. Uh, tell us a little bit about the story without giving it all away. Yeah, sure. Coincidentally, it kind of sort of, but not really has to do with Santa, but rather two unsavory individuals. One is college aged. Uh, the other is, uh, middle aged. And, um, so the, the college kid discovers the older guy, um, in a very compromising position at home with his mom. And so it's, it just all goes downhill from chapter one. He discovers that they're having an affair. He's married. And then he discovers, um, that this guy had something to do with the death of his dad. And so from that plot point, uh, which is just a few chapters in. So this isn't really giving anything away uh, from that plot point. It just all goes downhill for both of them. So it's not a uh, like Christmas horror slasher movie yeah, is, is my first thought reading that title. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I don't want to say it's not slasher because there there is some death. Okay. And I'll leave it at that. Okay. But yeah, thing, things go south really bad for both for both individuals. I, I love that because I, I like to watch a lot of horror movies leading up to Halloween. And mm -hmm. I like to watch a lot of good Christmas movies in December. But November was kind of this, eh. So I compromised and I watched Christmas horror movies in December. So it's like that transition. In the, yeah. So this sounds like it'd make a great movie. Uh, so well, let me ask you that. If someone asked you, would you like to see this turned into a movie or a TV show? Well, I certainly wouldn't turn down either offer, but I feel like a series would would prolong uh, the success of the franchise. Right. Um, yeah, I for some reason, I don't know that this particular book would work in a series format um, there. My first novel is probably out of my three is probably the only one that will work that would work in a series format. The other two, uh, including this one, um, would be more apropos for a movie. But I mean, what do I know? I don't produce film or TV, <laughs> right. so I could be totally off base here. <laughs> right, right. So what does like genre do you classify this in? Is it a action? Is it thriller? Uh, what do you what do you think it is? Yeah, it, it's labeled when you look in when you look under Amazon, it's labeled as a, as a mystery and a okay. thriller. Yeah, so all right, yeah, with a holiday and, theme. Yeah, a twist of a twist of. I don't want to say just because people die that it's horror, but I mean people die, and um, you know, there's some ruthless, there's some ruthlessness in the book. Um, okay, and so that's why I'm not really sure that it. I'm I'm, I tend to think that it does delve into horror. I'm just not so sure that just because people die, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because people can, people can die in a comedy. We, we, yeah. yeah, we, it seems like books nowadays are really getting away from that strict classification and you get lots of little bits here and there. I think a Netflix system of just using tags is much better to, Oh, I like gritty and horror. And I, so I like this, you know? So yeah, uh, I think that'd be good. So can you think, are, are there any books out there that are kind of similar for people that have said, oh, I've read that. It sounds like I'd like Freddie's book. Um, I don't know that there's a, a, a particular comp. Um, I will say, though, that if you, so my favorite authors are uh, Chuck Palahniuk, 
the mastermind behind Fight Club. I love Carolyn Kipnis, uh, the author of the U series. So those are my two favorite writers. <clears throat> and um, so if anyone likes that kind of style, the gritty, dark humor, um, very strange kind of fiction, transgressive, uh, creepy uh, fiction, then you would like this. Okay. All right. Now, you know, I've heard of Chuck. I haven't heard of Carolyn. Uh, what's that series like? Uh, I'll put some links, you know, uh, Freddie's favorites in the show notes. Yeah. Well, uh, the U, yeah, the U series follows someone who is a, uh, who's a serial killer. He ends up being a serial killer, but the U, the, the U in the U series, he is talking, it's written in the second person. So he's talking to his victim, soon to be victim, um, in the second person. So you're reading it and it's like he's reading the book to you, like he's narrating wow. to you. So it's like, hey, you came into the bookshop and look at you wearing this. Oh, yeah, you are doing this. Oh, you're going to be doing that. So, yeah. And and the um, the narrative, the, the style is is just on point on point yeah um and and it's it's a netflix series so anybody listening may have seen the netflix series and not realize that it's based on a book i do prefer the audio book over both netflix and um the actual you know pages just because santino fontana is one hell of an audio uh audio book narrator uh, he is just flawless Nice. Yeah, I've I've had a couple audio books I prefer over the written book, and partly because of the narrator, uh, they just nailed it so well. What's your favorite audio book? Uh, I've got two of them, and they're uh, one's good in what I normally read, but the other one's a little off. Uh, my favorite two are the Odd Thomas books, uh, which I can't remember the narrator at the moment, but he just nailed the tone of the book and the. The voice of the main character so well uh, that I just I've listened to it multiple times. And then the other is way off what I normally listen to, but it's the Sookie Stackhouse books that the True Blood TV show is based on. Uh, uh, for some reason, her voice talking is just way fits the t again, the tone of the whole book. And uh, I listened to that whole series and I normally would not pick up like a paranormal romance book, but it really <laughs> worked for me. <laughs> Okay, it's called the Sookie what? Sookie Stackhouse mystery novels. Uh, it's the how do you spell that? How do you, how do you spell that? Sookie S O O K I E and Stackhouse uh, S T A C K House. Yeah. Huh. I'm writing it down for people that for people that are not watching. I'm writing it down. All right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. If you've ever watched True Blood, it's the books that those that TV show was on. It's it's Southern romance vampires. Interesting. Yeah. You ever been to? Um, oh gosh, now I'm spacing on the name. Um, it's outside. It's about an hour outside of Atlanta where they did the uh, other vampire series, The Vampire Diaries. Oh no, no, but I've heard you can go and visit. Yeah, yeah, and they and they film one of the um, one of the Halloween movies there. And there was oh. another classic movie. It's a really cool, quaint kind of country town. Uh, it's a long drive, like well over an hour. It's not quite two hours, but yeah, it's um, it's interesting. It's a nice little town. I mean, you go and you have some fresh, you know, homemade hand churned ice cream and the food's really wow. good. Um, see where yeah, the and then you just work. go and yeah. And then there's a map. There's a map of uh, of all the houses where the uh where the vampire where the quote unquote vampires lived in the from the vampire diaries and so uh this was right right before covid started to get real serious it was march uh 2020 and my family and i we we had gone and um and here we're just it's me my wife and two teenage girls who are hooked on vampire diaries and um and we're walking through this neighborhood and standing in front of homes taking pictures of people's houses. And I'm like, y'all, this is embarrassing. And, I, <laughs> and, and, and normally teenagers are embarrassed by their parents, but here me being the dad, I'm like, just, just, just cross my arms, my hand over my face. Like nobody noticed me. Nobody noticed me. Um, but yeah, 
Yeah, you, that's, that's something you can do. <laughs> well, I was in New Orleans last year and I went around because there's been multiple movies shot there. You know, I went to the square where the one James Bond was. I looked up hmm. uh, NCIS New Orleans, the different spots. And it's hilarious because they have this uh, place they go in to go to their headquarters and it's marked and you can go to it. And it's it's a, a somebody's garage. There's nothing in there that they really walk into. They just film the outside parts, then go somewhere else to film the rest of it. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's All incredible right. what they make it look like. Yeah, yeah, it fools you. But I got a picture there, so I'm like, woo. <laughs> so uh, for for this book, um, people that have read it, what have it, what's the feedback been? Well. Uh, the book is, I don't know at the, I don't, we're recording on November 10th, so I'm not sure when the episode will be out, but it's only been out for a few days. I've got uh, a couple of reviewers um, who says it's a haunting and chilling revenge thriller. Uh, there's a gentleman who was recently on my podcast who was gracious enough to blurb it. And yes. uh, he, he was like, you know, the, these characters are diabolical and you'll love to hate them. And so, yeah, it's uh, so far so good. Uh, my beta readers seem to like it. And uh, it was just it was interesting. It was a different it was a different writing experience for me because I have never written from the first person. Um, I've never written first person present with two characters in alternating chapters. And so wow. it was a it was a neat format for me to uh, to explore. And like I said, it things go very badly for both individuals and and uh in the book's darkest moments uh it was it was strange what what kind of took over as i was writing it and then like the the feeling um like it, it felt like like i'm writing these scenes and it felt like i like i actually did something oh wow like I wrote the, I only wrote them, but it felt like I was actually engaged in the the, the physical moment. So and your, it was, your mind kind of took over your body and made it feel like it had done what yeah. it had. <laughs> yeah, and I hate to, I hate to sound like that kind of author, like oh my characters made me do it, but no, that's a real, it's a real thing. And uh, there was one particular day where it was er, during the during the one of the most conflict ridden um, passages of the book, and I had written two chapters, so obviously it's alternating first person present. So it was one character did this one thing in one chapter to the guy. And then the guy who had it done to him is writing it as he, so he's narrating as it's happening to him. And it, I had to step outside and I couldn't write for a couple of days because it really messed with my head. Wow. Does wow, that make sense? Intense. Yeah, that's intense. Cause you're the one yeah. writing it. You, you get that people reading books that like, wow, that, but you know, if you, and it's almost, it, it I, I like quantum physics and I always say, you know, Maybe there's something coming in from another world. You're just channeling what's there. You know, maybe you, you have an uh, alter ego that did experience it. And you connected. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, and it makes you, it really makes you wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let, let me ask you this, Freddie. Is your house haunted? No, not that I know of. I will. Oh, <laughs> that's my dog. <laughs> I was in here. And I'm like, well, I didn't see somebody come in. So uh, just check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my kid, uh, my younger daughter will tell you that when she was a little girl, she would have dreams about a little girl in her room. Oh, and, I, and talked to some other kids and people with the same type of thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as a teenager, I'll tell her, yeah, well, you know what? Better you than me, kid. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I never uh, tell her th I never tell I never tell the eight year old version of her that. Right. <laughs> but as right. a teenager, you know. <laughs> now you can pick on I just said that to a friend. We've all our kids are above twenty and we were saying playing a game and said something. It's like, man, isn't it great when the kids grow up big enough that you can like be mean to them <laughs> and not get in trouble because they're adults. Yeah. <laughs> it scar um, them for life. Yeah, yeah. Uh so is your book self-published or do you have a publisher? It is indie published through Tuscany Bay Books. Okay. Is that your own or some, uh, some other publishing? 
Yeah, it's somebody else's press. It, it's Richard Palinelli's press uh, out of California. Oh, nice. Okay, great. Uh, and we talked about the TV show. Do you have a website? Uh, I do. You can go to, for anybody interested in Allow Me to Ruin Your Christmas, the website is ruinmychristmas.com. Nice. So do you get a different website for each of your books? No, this is just a, uh, what, what do they call it? A, a It's just a rebranded link that redirects to my website. Okay. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Okay. That's an idea yeah. for Yeah, others. there's a technical term. Yeah, there's a technical term for it, and I forget. Uh, redirect, uh, yeah, something. redirect, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Redirected okay. website. Yeah. So what are your plans for your next book now that this one's out? Yeah. Um, I've had a couple of ideas of what I'd like to write, uh, for my next fiction book, but I'm at a point where I think with 2024 coming up, I know next year's 2023, but the five-year anniversary of my first book is going to be in 2024. And so uh, I feel like it behooves me to do a sort of remix of, of my first novel and with okay. a new cover with expanded beginnings, middles and endings. And I was wrestling around with maybe an idea of uh, maybe journal entries from one or two of the characters. Uh, maybe a short story or novella, like a prequel or a sequel or both. I don't, I don't know what that, I don't know what the five-year anniversary remix would, would be, uh, other than it's going to have new artwork and it's going to be, um, kick ass because I feel like since, uh, since 2018 writing my, um, my first manuscript, um, I feel like I've learned a lot as far as storytelling and plotting and and character development. So much so that with my third novel, uh, I didn't work with the with a developmental editor. I plotted it out and allowed myself a little bit of grace to let the characters tell me what to do. But um, you know, I, um, I I did work with a copy editor and proofreader for reference. Um, but I did not do, I did not use a developmental editor for the first two books I did. Uh, and I feel like I learned a lot through, through, each, through working with each of these women. And, um, it was like, it was almost like going to, uh, to a writing school when you, when you get a really good developmental editor, that's what it's like because they don't, they don't cherry pick. Um, for instance, the, the, with the second book, um, she literally told me you lost me as a reader. Wow. And you know, I, I, I don't know if it's because I'm self-loathing, but I welcome, I welcome, uh, one of my friends who does public speaking training. Um, he calls it hot and cold feedback. So hot being positive, cold being negative. I love cold feedback. I just do. I think that's where, that's where a lot of growth happens because if someone is just going to be, Hey, Steven, great job, great job, great job, great job. And then the one time you actually do something that is not right, your whole world comes crumbling down, <laughs> right? you know? So I, I totally agree. Uh, same thing. I learned a lot from my editor and uh, grew a lot from that. And I, I you know, I've had people, I, let read my stuff. And, oh yeah, that was great. I'm like, that doesn't help me. I can't get better. I would rather people tell me this is what's not good, what I don't like before I release it. And then it flops and I don't make any money and nobody else reads it. And you know, I, you want all of those things. That's why you're writing it, you know, and, yeah. and they don't understand. I'm, you're not attacking me personally. You're helping me improve because I can't see my own flaws. I want that and ask that. Now, if somebody's being a troll and just starts attacking you personally, it's ignore them. They're not helping you either. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's why I feel like that's why in order to write fiction, I think you should be at least 30 or at least 30. That way you're, you've got the emotional maturity. Well, <laughs> well that's what they claim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what they claim. <laughs> but no, I mean, I think it, 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 it takes a certain set of, of, 
I think you have to have a level of thick skin because if you're younger, you're still discovering yourself and, and it could be to get that kind of brutally honest feedback can really stifle your, your growth and make you not want to ever write again. Right. Yeah. Agreed. So uh, let me ask, do you have any favorite bookstores you like to go to? Uh, you know what I do? There's one in, in Southwest Houston called murder by the book. And the website <laughs> is murderbooks.com that now don't let the name fool you. They sell all kinds of books, but I just love this place. It's a nice little shop and, um, they, they host authors from all walks of life from all genres. Uh, they go in during COVID, they were doing a lot of the virtual signing, uh, virtual events. Um, but they, they hosted me for, from my first book, but they've, they've had Brad Thor, They've had Ruth Ware um, in February, January or February. I forget. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to host a live Q&A, tentatively speaking, uh, with Brad Taylor. So, nice. it, the, yeah, it's just a, it's a fun place. It's a fun place. They've got a, a they've got a, a space for uh, for Q&A events. So you can you can squeeze about maybe 30 people uh, into, into the little space and. You got the the table with the chairs and the mics and yeah, it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun spot for, uh, for anyone who wants to learn about their favorite writer. Good. Well, I'll put a link to their website. I like to you know help bookstores out some too, if uh, we can do so. That's great. All right. So before we move on to the second half and talk some author stuff, uh, for everybody listening, uh, if they said, Hey, Freddie, what's this? Uh, horror Christmas book about this murder Christmas is, you know, uh, why should I get this and read this? What would you tell them? I would tell them that if they are tired of the feel good Christmas movie specials on TV and they just need something different, this is a book for you. <laughs> if you, yes. if you, if you are tired of characters that just always do the right thing, no matter what, this is the book for you. We've got perfectly flawed individuals doing terrible things and they have no idea that they're doing terrible things because they think that they're doing them for, for, for all the right reasons. They, they don't, they don't see their flaws. And I think that's what makes for a great story is, is perfectly imperfect people doing crazy, insane things. And they have, they're totally self unaware. Great. All right. Well, Freddie, I, I appreciate you talking to us and sharing your book with us. I Thank wish you, you luck. And uh, we should have this episode out before Christmas so everyone can get the book and read it to get in that Christmas spirit. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, if you enjoyed this episode of Discovered Wordsmiths, please support the author. Go to their website, go to Amazon, look them up, get the book. And if you click on the link that I have in the show notes, you'll also help support the podcast so I can keep the hosting and all the software I use and uh, keep it running for, to help more authors. When I am recording this, we've got over 100 episodes, lots of authors. Go to the website, discoveredwordsmiths.com. Check it out. There's a lot of great authors, probably in some genre that you love. See what they have. Check out their books. That's what the point of the podcast is for. So people can discover new authors, find some new books they love, support the authors so they can continue writing. So please support them. And if you do like the podcast, if you've been thinking of podcasting or you're a writer, I've got some links also at the website. Click on those if you're interested in any of the software or services that I talk about. Everything that I have there is something I use. So I've got an affiliate link. Again, it's a little bit, if everyone clicked on those, if they were going to get it anyway, it helps keep the podcast going. So let's all help each other out and discover more, so, sorry, discover more, discover more authors to read. Thank you for listening to Discovered Wordsmiths. Come back next week and listen to another author discuss the road they've traveled and maybe sometime in the near future, it might be you.